Hello and welcome to the Clock and Talk, an Arsenal podcast, and we're covering, for fuck's sake. Good job, me and Schwinn are a lot more prepared than you, because if we came on and went, oh yeah, we didn't watch the game either, we was on the pit, it'd be a pretty shit podcast. Well, Mesut Ozil is the best number 10 in the Premier League. Yeah, that all looks good on paper, but there's never been a football match played on paper, so it's not really worth much. I'm going to make a bold prediction that Jack Wilshere will sign for West Ham United. It's time to start watching football with your eyes. I think people listen to what the commentator is saying and have that as their own opinion, but if you watch what's going on, you'll see things a lot clearer. Schwinn, who do you think is going to win the Golden Boot? I think Alexis Sanchez might do a number on that this year. <laughs> yeah, okay. Tony talks about a clock being right twice a day. Tez is right every day. Try it from five, lads. Fucking beauty! Hello and welcome to the Clock and Talk. I'm your host, Tez. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. You can follow us at Clock and underscore Talk on Twitter. We're also on Facebook and YouTube each and every week. Um, well, it's been a couple of days. Um, I'm usually joined by Schwinn and Tony, but Schwinn has decided to give us the punt again, Tony. So it's only me and you, buddy. Yeah, kind of getting used to this. I don't know. He might not earn his place back. <laughs> um, I don't know what his go is. He's touring around the world. He's, he's you know, what, what he's, I don't know. He might be back next week, I suppose. Who knows? Fucking idiot. <laughs> nah, good luck to him. Good old Schwinn. Um, what did I say? I said because Ozil's not playing, he, he decided to chuck his dummy out and fucking he, he's not coming on the podcast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, okay, let's get into this game. Huddersfield, buddy. Uh, formation and your lineup. Were you a bit surprised? I was surprised and... I thought it was the wrong choice, uh, going with the flat three. It's all well and good saying, oh, it looks attacking because we've got the two strikers on the pitch. But there was just no link-up at all. The, the gap between Huddersfield's defence and midfield was huge. But we had no one filling that gap. Or one of the two strikers had to come short. And then it left their, their centre-backs against one striker. So it just it didn't work at all. Um mm-hmm. I was really surprised he he didn't play two of the three, any two of the three, and then play either Iwobi or Mickey behind. Still keeping the two strikers, but the flat three in midfield just really didn't work at all. I um I I was fuck arsing around. I had got a new phone, so I wasn't really on Twitter. Uh, I'd imagine a lot of Arsenal fans would be a dream. Lacazette, Aubameyang up front, finally. Um, everyone's been calling for it. And it was only last week I was saying, you know, give it a year, two years for Guendouzi, um, you know, to obviously find a Guendouzi type of super player, which I think he's going to be eventually, um, to fit him, Granite and Tuera in the, in the same team. And here we go. We've got two up front and them three in the mids. Arsenal yeah, fans I mean, would have been fucking, you know, having a good old wank over that. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I think he's put the two up front, which a lot of people have been calling for, but he hasn't given them a platform to, to perform because he's not given them any support. Like you look at who's gonna, who's gonna, get the assists, because the the three midfielders are too far away. Even even though Granite does have a great range of passing, he's not a. Any time he gets assists, are usually from set pieces, so. And then, and then the wing backs in general against a team like Huddersfield that are going to defend with seven or eight are, are very rarely going to get in behind. So you you just think like, how are these two going to get the ball? And and, and that was the problem. Mm, yeah, they were definitely struggling to get the ball, weren't they? Uh, get into the match. Obviously, <laughs> Granite he got a yellow straight off the bat. Twenty fourth minute. Uh, yeah, I mean for me it wasn't. Obviously, he got booked for diving. Uh, as I said, not for me. Uh, this, I think he just ran across him. It's not a bad foul by uh, Aaron Moy, but whenever you run across someone, any, any little touch because of the like the way you're running sideways is it, it, going to take you down. Granite maybe made a little bit of a meal of it because they'd gotten away with so many of them types of fouls. Yep. But for me, it's 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 definitely not a booking. 
I'm trying to, you know, where do we steer this podcast? Because the first half, you know, it was pretty fucking... Well, to be fair, I, I think fucking more happened in the first half. That it, look, I mean, the whole quality of the game was shite. But yeah. for me, I think there's probably more action in the first half. I don't think anything happened in the second half, apart from the goal. The goal happened. There was a couple of shots. Um, look, I, we'll speak about that. The Abemiang... Uh, granite, you know, went Gwendozi past the granite and then granite to a Um Yeah, Bamiyang goal you'd think he'd get every day of the week. Yeah, I mean, look, he's missed easier chances this year, that's for sure, but he should be scoring there. Um, I was just obviously saying to you before we recorded, them, them chances are sometimes not as easy as they look. I'm not really defending him because he should still score, but when a ball's flashed in uh, from a wideish area like that, it's on your weaker foot and you, you've just got a product foot. You, you should score, but it's, it's, that's more instinct. And that's probably what's more disappointing, that his instinctive finishing is usually quite good. Mm. But obviously it wasn't to be. Um, and I, I think the, the an, an early goal would have done us a, a favour because they would have probably had to come out and play a bit more at yeah. some point. But wasn't to be. wasn't to be. Um, that, that, I have to give praise to Gwendozi and obviously Granite. Yeah. Me, they were. Oh, I like that. <laughs> move the ball, you know, change the direction, move the ball around, and it just yeah, it would have been, it would have been perfect if I'd been able to finish that. Uh, like I said, I can't remember the exact minute that one was um, because I I spoke to you, you know, obviously before we started recording, and I I thought the Abemiang one was, a, 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 you know, a better miss than the Lacazette one, but you said the Lacazette one. Would have been an easier miss. Yeah, for me, um, a chance where you've got time, you make the decision. As I said, Aubameyang's one's instinctive. He stuck his leg out and he should score. Again, I'm not defending him. But he's just stuck his leg out and, and it's his first time. It's on his wrong foot. Whereas Lacazette, the ball's been rolled into him by Guendouzi. He's got time to take two touches. So his first touch, he could have put anywhere he wanted it. He could have taken it right foot left foot forward to the side. He could have done whatever he wanted. And then you've got time to pick your finish and choose. You're in control. You're in complete control. So for me, I think his first touch was a bit heavy, which led to him stretching and then he slips and, and balloons it over. Mm. But for me, as I said, if I was playing and you said to me, you can have one of them chances, I would a million percent prefer the Lacazette chance. If um, you criticised the formation a little bit and you said Emery got it wrong at the start, if if Abemian gets that goal, Lacazette gets his goal. Uh, are we having a different conversation here? Uh, no, I still think it was wrong. Uh, we're having a different conversation because the game would have been a hell of a lot more open, a hell of a lot more easier. Yeah. But you could you could still see where the mistakes were. We, I mean, we ended up basically going long for a lot of the first half because we had no one. We had deep midfielders, three of them, and they were kind of. It was it was very easy for for Huddersfield to defend because we had three centre-backs and three deep midfielders. So when we had the ball, say, at the keeper's feet, there was no real options because they could just flood that area and then we had to go long to Aubameyang or Lacazette. And I know the Huddersfield defenders, if you'd have said to Huddersfield before the game, Arsenal were going to go long and it's their centre-backs against Aubameyang and Lacazette in the air, they would have fancied that. So mm. I think, look, it would have put a gloss on it and if we won 3-4-0, of course it looks better. But I think he got the, the formation completely wrong mm, okay i'm going through this game and and look I've, let's just let's just go the first half one two three four five six seven yellow cards in the first half uh one two three four arsenal three huddersfield thoughts on the referee uh shocking just again not biased i feel like i'm saying this a lot this season <laughs> i don't think he, i don't think he was particularly biased he, he was in some occasions some of our bookings are an absolute joke mm. um but just just bad just very very bad and it, it was a a mike dean-esque performance where he wanted to be the star of the show if he was talking to someone he wanted to stop the game for 30 seconds so everyone knew that he was in control like if a free kick was taken half a yard out of place like Okay, I kind of get it if it's on the edge of the area, but when it's in your own area and the keeper takes it from, say, still within the six-yard box, but a yard either side and he calls it back and you just think, fuck off. Like, it hasn't impacted the game one little bit. 
and every throw on he wanted to make sure that the players were going back or going forward and look yeah I know the letter of the law that you take the throw on where the ball goes out but every throw on you'll ever see someone steals two or three yards either way and it's just what happens but every single time he wanted to bring it back and and make sure and, and, and have retakes if it was taken from the wrong place and it just allowed no flow to the game. Mm-hmm. Well, ended up uh, finishing nine for the game, yellow cards. Oh, fuck me, dude. You, you don't realise until you look back and you think, Jesus Christ, was it... I, I'm trying to think if many of them were, were necessary, to be honest. I, but but talking about yellow cards, um, Socrates, Mustafi, um, that type of rules them out for next week, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, Socrates was a yellow. There's, there's no two ways about that one. The Mustafi one, for me, never in a million years. It's not... For, I don't think it's a penalty. Um, I'll be the first to say that. But there, it's not 50-50. It's not either a penalty or a dive. There is a, a middle ground. I, I think he was touched. I think there's not enough for him to go down the way he did. And in all fairness, I think the ref probably should be right in that I half agree with what he's done, but the rule isn't played like that. So, for, again, I say this so often, the rule is wrong, not what the referee... The ref hasn't refereed to the rule. Mm. The fact that I don't agree with the rule is neither here nor there. But you see it week in, week out, whereas players touched, and it's not enough to go down, but they never get booked for diving because they have been touched. Mm. And I think that's exactly the case of what happened with Mustafi. Um, as I said, for me, the rule should be that if you're exaggerating or, or play acting or, or it's simulation then you probably should be booked but that's not what we see and it, obviously again it comes down to consistency we we could see that if that same thing would have happened in every other, other one of the 10 games played this weekend I think Mustafi would be the only one to get booked I think we'd probably see two or three penalties awarded for it which I would also think is wrong and then five or six or however many is left just just play on and, and nothing's done yeah yeah so, while we're talking centre-backs, obviously this is going to leave a huge hole against Southampton. Now, what happens, um, obviously, they can play, Socrates Mustafi can play in the Europa League game, and then yep. does he use the ones that he was going to maybe in the Europa League to Southampton, or does he test them during the week, you think, and, and you know, I don't know who we've got there. Well, that's a, I don't know what he's going to do, because obviously Koscielny's only played reserve team or under-23s or under-21 games. Mm. So, in an ideal world, they would have given Koscielny probably 90 on Thursday, and then eased him back in over the Christmas period. But there's no way, having been out for so long, that he's going to be able to play 90 on Thursday, and then 90 again on Sunday. So, that's going to pose an issue. Um Monreal, the same sort of thing. Obviously, he's not been out for as long, but the same sort of thing. I would imagine we're going to have to go back to a back four because at the moment, the only people we've got that can play a centre-back are Monreal, who's been out for ages, Koscielny, who's been out for ages, and Lichsteiner, who isn't really a centre-back, but he seems to be OK on the right side of that back three. So I'd imagine we'll go back to a two, but it's a headache. It's definitely a headache for Emery. Big headache. Um... Mafropanis, is he back yet or not? Uh, he's still not training. Still not training, OK. Yeah. But again, he's, a, he's the same situation. Even if he came back to training today, how he, and he'll, he'll either go into the Southampton game having not played for since May or April even. Mm. So yeah. he's either going to go into a game having not played since April or, as I said, he's not fit anyway, but even if he was... He'd have to play Thursday to get some minutes under his belt, and then again on Sunday, having been out for basically eight months. Like either way, it's it just it can't work. He's in the, exactly the same situation as Koscielny, really, apart from he had a preseason, so he played a couple of games in preseason. But it's the same sort of thing. He hasn't played a competitive football match since he played, I think, eight minutes against Leicester in April and got sent off, and that was the last time he's played. Mm-hmm. Do you? So it's fucking it, like. <laughs> you got Monreal, yeah. he can go back in the left, but then I was uh, obviously... Yeah, I think over. it's more of a worry of getting the people players minutes as well, because they've all been, they've, as I said, Koscielny and Monreal have been out for a decent amount of time. Monreal is less of a concern, yeah. but they've been out, so you want to get them minutes to try and get them up to full speed, but there's no way that their bodies, well, as I said, especially Koscielny, 
there's no way you can ask him to do 90 twice in four days, having not done 90 since probably March. Do you run with Lickstein in the centre, Bellerin and um, Klasnach? Not as a back three. Not as a back three, okay. It's going to be interesting, mate. <laughs> mm. Okay, that is a, a good headache. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be, be watching with interest on Thursday. I will be to see what he actually does there now. Um, so, second half, we come on... Well, you missed the, you've skipped the... Um... The Lacazette offside goal. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. So Lacazette, um, was it? Oh, oh yeah. I, I, offside for you? <laughs> Again, the the linesman's got it wrong. Um, because, but, look, for me, it should be offside. Mm. I hate the rule. Again, I hate the rule. Um, under the rule, the goal should be given. It's not offside. The linesman's got it completely wrong. Again, for me, the rule is wrong because he's gained an advantage by being in an offside position. If he wasn't offside, the defender's not under the pressure to play that ball and doesn't underhit it and Lacazette doesn't score. But the way the rule is and the way we see it implemented week in, week out, the goal should be given. Mm. Well, I usually watch the game with the commentary down, but I, after that I, I was like, oh, I turned it up and they actually said uh, they got that he got that wrong and it should have been a goal. They couldn't believe that. He was called called offside for that. So, yeah, as I said, for me that the rule is nonsense because basically the rule since pretty much states that as soon as the the opposition player touches the ball, everything that has gone before it becomes null and void. So you can stand just behind the player and pressure him, mm. but not touch the ball. And then as soon as he fucks up because you're pressuring him, then it's his mistake and you become you're not offside anymore. So, as I said, I think the linesman's got it wrong. Should be a goal. But uh, I don't like the rule. Mm -hmm. If VAR was in, it'd be a goal? Should be, yeah. As I said, it, it comes down to their interpretation of the rule. But it should be. I think, for me, the, the, the rule should be if the ball is aimed towards you and there's no doubt who it's aimed towards. So, when Aubameyang flicks that on, the only person ahead of him is Lacazette. So that it's not like Aubameyang's tried to flick it on to anyone else. There's no doubt what Aubameyang's tried to do. So for me, the flag should go up at that point. That That's how I think the rule should be should be done. If the ball is aimed towards you, there's clearly no one else that it's going towards. You're the only intended re recipient and you're offside. The flag should go up. But that's not what the rule is. Mm -hmm. Jeez, it seems to be last week VAR would have won us that game. And this week, well, we did win it eventually, but... Um... We would have gone up before half time at one nil. The VAR in place by the sounds of it. Um, okay, so we go into half time now. Emery, you know, he, he he's not not frightened to throw, you know, some substitutes on straight away. Um, Lacazette, Mkhitaryan, Awobi, Lichtenstein. Ah, thoughts there. I think he got it wrong again. I think Emery probably had his luckiest. Uh, performance as Arsenal manager yesterday because I think he got pretty much everything wrong uh, Look, everyone watching the first half knew there was going to be changes I, I know we don't know exactly what Emery's going to do yet but I think we've got a pretty much enough clue after what is it 23 games now that, that if something's not working he's going to change it mm. uh, I expected one of the two to come on or I wasn't surprised that both of them come on we, we definitely knew one of them was going to come on but um one of the midfield three had to go off because, as I said, that, that gap in the middle was huge and then he, he bring on wide players but then Aubameyang was in the box on his own and that gap still existed between the midfield and the strikers and if Mickey and Iwobi tucked in to, to cover it then we didn't have the width that, that Emery wanted to bring on anyway. So I think the, the Lichsteiner one's fair enough, go back to a back four, there's no, there's no worries there. Yeah. But for me, the other sub had to be um, one of the midfield three, any one of them at that point, to be honest. Uh, I thought it was potentially going to be Xhaka, just because he was on the yellow. He was the only one that was on the yellow at that time. Um, and he was kind of running a tightrope because he did have to f go into a few tackles, which he won. But you know when you're on a yellow and you're granite, granite Xhaka, if you miss time on one of them tackles, you're oh, gone. Fucking worry. So, it's a worry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I thought that one of the midfield three should come off. And as I said, I thought it'd probably be him. Um and so you could have still made the same subs, but 
you'd left Aubameyang and Lacazette on because look, we needed to score and just having Aubameyang in the box was was never going to do it because they didn't have any intention of coming out. And so I think in the second half, we created even less than we did in the first half, even though it looks like he's made two attacking changes. Mm. I said for me, I think he, he got it completely wrong. I mean, in the whole game yesterday, there was two shots on target, one in the first half, one in the second half, obviously the second half being the goal. But we've just gone over the first half and we've had the Lacazette chance, the Aubameyang chance, the the offside goal. You talk about the second half and there's nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got, yeah, I've got eight shots off target. <laughs> Yeah, but that's, that was obviously across both. But you look at, as I said, there's nothing, there's no chances or anything you can discuss in the second half. So mm. I think I think Emery got it wrong both from the start and with his changes, to be honest. Not with who he bring on, but with the, as I said, going 4 3 2 1 was just, just Hang weird. On, I, think, I think you're given, I think, yeah, I get where you're coming from because it did look a bit of that game, but I, I'm just, no, that eight, eight shots off target. And we've always discussed, you know, what shots are they fucking actually counting here? So there's two on target for Arsenal, eight off target, and four blocked. Yeah. So there's a As few. I said, there was two on target. Yeah, two on. But, but I'm just, I just, wonder what the eight off would have been. Yeah, but I mean, look, like, Granite had two where one of them went into about row 700. Yeah. And that counts as your stats. This is where mm. numbers like that are pointless. Like, you think of. Headers that went mad, like mild. Mikatarian had one that went two foot over, and no one's ever challenged. And it's not even really a chance. I'm not digging Mikatarian out. It just happened to be him that had it. Yeah. Like, was, like the better way to say name a chance in the second half, barring the goal. Obviously, we didn't actually have a chance. So in the first half, Abamyang and Lacazette, neither of them were on target, but we can say they're clearly massive chances. Whereas you look in the second half and you go, oh. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't much. Nah, nah, exactly. Um, okay, well, it's not. It's not real. Ah, oh, well, well, Monreal, come on. Mustafi went off. That was. Um, that was about it. In the second half substitution, Guendouzi then got to yellow, and then the goal in the eighty-third minute, and that sums up the game, mate. Torre, yeah, I mean, Torreira scored it, but yeah, you can talk us through it. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant ball by Guendouzi, just into a great area. I don't know if he partic- I don't think he particularly picked out Aubameyang, but it's a great ball into a great area. Um, Aubameyang's done really well to keep his call cool there. Um, I, I think most people just expected expected him to try and smash a shot at goal, and, and the angle tight uh, got tight on him, and he, and he couldn't really do much. And to be honest, I don't think he's picked out Torreira. I think he's just put it into an area and, and hoped someone was there. And from the stands, we saw we saw Torreira like a yard or two out, s- setting up for the bicycle kick, and we thought, oh no, just just pull it in. Like there's no need for any fucking acrobatics or anything. And obviously he scored. Looking back on it, he probably had to do it because the ball was behind him. But yeah. when you're in a rush and in that moment, and obviously your angle is your angle, you don't have a TV camera giving you the perfect angle. Which I just thought like just header it in, or do you know what I mean? Just get it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, just get the fucking in there. In the yard. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't but, care how ugly it is as long as it goes in yeah, the net. Yeah, get it over the line. <laughs> yeah. But looking back on it on TV, I said he probably had to do it and, and he's taken it well and, and, and that wins us the game. I think what was more pleasing is we didn't really have any scares after that. You always worry of our defence that that something's going to happen, but they, did, they didn't have... I mean, they didn't make a chance in the whole game, really. Mm. But, um, yeah, they didn't have any threatening moments. I mean, because they were still... I think 15 minutes to go because there's seven minutes stoppage time and the goal was in the 83rd. Yeah. So 14, 15 minutes and, and they didn't have a sniff, which you kind of got to be pleased about. Two ways of worry. Uh, who was your man in the match? Um, I don't think anyone played brilliant. I, th- I think arguably Granite was our best player, but when you have a match winner like that, I think you've got to give it to Torreira. Um, I'm not one of those that's in the habit of giving him every week just because his name's Torreira. But I think when when you have a game winner like that, who also played well, um, I, I think he's he's got to get it. Had it been nil nil, uh, I would have gone Granite. Um, I, <laughs> I don't want to sound like your echo here, but I was going to say exactly the same thing. Um, Granite for me was he was the best player on the field, but yeah, as you say, you, you've got to give it to Torreira for for getting the goal. Had Granite 
got the goal, then Granite would have got it. So that was probably the only difference between. I thought both of them were really good. Um, I actually don't mind that. I, don't, I hear what you're saying with that mid, but I'm, I do like like them three on the on there. But I, I yeah, I don't know. We're just. I wonder whether Urza would have made a difference with them three. I there. think yeah. Well, he would have. He would have made Huddersfield play play completely differently because they were leaving space between the lines because they knew that none of our players were looking to go there. Mm-hmm. Even even Ramsey again. I know he's not the most creative with the ball, but he takes up positions between the lines. And, and Huddersfield would have had to think about that. They they almost were allowed to fully press us because no one was taking up positions between the lines. As I said, we'd have a goal kick and the centre backs was the, the two outside centre backs would split wide, one in the middle of the box. The three centre midfielders would all come short. So that's and then the wing the wing backs would go sort of semi high and wide. So we had nine players in our half. Mm. So it's so much easier to press. Where so they could push on their their attackers and their midfielders, knowing that their back three would be comfortable enough to deal with our two. Mm-hmm. Whereas if we had someone in between the lines, it makes them play differently. I think had they not had they played exactly how they did, which they wouldn't have done. But but Urza would have been on the pitch. I think we'd have had a field day. I think we'd have won it very very comfortably. But they wouldn't play like that had an Urza or a Ramsey been on the pitch. It wouldn't be that formation. Well, it wouldn't be that. It's not even formation. They'd probably say the same formation, but the way they play it, they wouldn't commit oh, so okay. many people to press. Who do you because, take off, Guendouzi? I, yeah, I wouldn't have gone with the three. I, I think no. it's wait. It it means you can control the ball more. I think in some big games that three might not be a horrible idea. Hmm. But against a team where you're going to have vast majority of the ball anyway you don't need people that can just keep the ball yeah. you need someone that's going to take a bit more risks and, and and may lose it a bit more but they're going to be near the attackers and, and trying to put them through on goal mm-hmm. I'm just looking at how they set up so they set up a 3-5-1-1 yeah I don't know hmm um Leno he was, didn't have a lot of work to do he was pretty good pretty consistent didn't have anything to do. I wouldn't say he was good because he didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. It's not criticism, but if you don't do anything, you're, you're just nothing for me. Like, yeah. Okay, and you can't blame him because they didn't give him anything to there do. There's nothing to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that's about it. Unless you want to touch any more on that. No, no. At all. Yeah. Yeah, we talk about Klasnach, Bellerin, I don't know, but it's not... You know, you go through all the players, but as you say, I don't think anybody was... Announced, you know, Torreira, Granite were probably the best on the day. Um, Abamyang, like I said, didn't get much ball. Formation probably didn't work. So there's there's a lot of factors. Oh, you already touched on Ramsey. We touched on this also. Yeah, let's get into some questions. There okay. Is a, there is a few, I think. Good podcasting because I haven't even fucking organised this shit. You didn't even put a thread up till this morning, did you? <sighs> no, no, I, I wasn't. I said I didn't have a phone, so I wasn't on Twitter. I thought, I thought, I thought Schwinn would have done it. To be honest, like, yeah, fucking useless is that bloke, like, <laughs> fuck my hair. Yeah, I'm hearing you, Schwinn. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Um, okay, Sandeep, uh, watching this game in particular, it made me realise how big we lack depth due to injuries and suspension. Does this A concern you? B do you think it makes a great case to strengthen in January? Um, I don't know if we particularly lack depth. Um, I think it comes down to Emery getting it wrong. I think he's started just the wrong setup, the wrong formation, and look, who are you gonna? I don't know. Look, you, look, you go looking forward and you say, oh, Southampton, we're going to be short at the back. So you could say we lack depth, but we're essentially without Mavropanos, Holding, Socrates, Mustafi. That's four centre-backs that you're without because Shelney just coming back. That's not lacking depth. That's just having a glut of injuries at the same time. You could say the same at the start of the season when we had Kolasinac, Monreal, Maitland-Niles all out and Lichsteiner had to play at left-back. Again, that's not lacking depth. That's just ugh, fucking unlucky. You can't you can't just stockpile and have eight players for every position just in case something like this happens. Um, look, and and the centre back thing's very short term. They're, they're both missing because they're on they're on they've had their fifth booking. So that's for one game that Socrates and Mustafi are out. Um, Holding's obviously long term. 
but I, I don't think that this particularly showed we're we're lacking in depth. We had some, we had Ozil and Ramsey out who can both potentially play ten, and and we still had Iwobi and Mickey on the bench. So there, there's four people there that can play ten. He just chose not to play them. Um, wingers, we've been lacking in depth since before the season started. So I, I don't think this game showed that. I think we've known that since the day the transfer window closed and we didn't sign one. Yeah, um, the, the wing has been a big problem. I, I just, you reminded me last week when we were talking about um, centre backs and whatnot, Janko. <laughs> I mean, look, he can, put, uh, I, I he can potentially play off the right in a free, like he did against, against uh, Vorskler. It's not ideal, but mm. it's better than some of the other options we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Steiner, Janko, Monreal. Throw you'd go with? No, because none of them can play in the middle. I think he's it's a difficult one because you'd say you'd usually say if you're going for a two uh, two centre backs, they both have to be actual centre backs. And as I said, Koshani's fitness de- dependent. We don't actually have any centre backs. Mm. You go with a three, you can get away with two defensively minded full backs and then one centre back, one actual centre back. But again, Koscielny needs that only one actual centre back, so it leaves an issue with both systems. Janko played a couple of weeks ago in the Europa League, but he wouldn't even be. Yeah, he played on the right in a back in a back. He played at the right of the three centre backs in a back three, mm. which is as I said, he can he can arguably do a job there. He's quick enough and strong enough. Playing out from the back is always going to be a bit dodgy. Mm. Yeah, I'm just thinking match fitness. What what does that bloke do when he's not fucking playing? Uh, he's played. He's played a few Europa League games. Well, he's played a few Europa League games. He's played in the Carabao Cup. He's. He'll be all right, fitness-wise. Yeah. Okay. Well, the ability is the issue. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, Sandeep says, "What are your thoughts regarding Lichtsteiner's reaction? I thought it was not required. I understand you can be passionate, <laughs> but." But it was an unnecessary yellow card to give away. Not convinced with him, I worry a lot. Lot if Hector is injured. Uh, I don't think he's ever looked brilliant on the right. To be honest, <laughs> obviously he's only really played on the right of a four. I think he's looked quite assured and composed in the in the right of a three um, against United when he came on. I said on our last podcast that I was pretty fearful, but I thought he done he done quite well. Uh, didn't have any problems against United. Didn't have any problems at all yesterday. His reaction was just one of frustration and that it builds up. And, and, I, and I know it's the same for people watching it on TV, so I'm not trying to do the, oh, I was there, so I know what it's like. But the frustration was building up in the crowd as well because they were just getting away with foul after foul after foul. And again, a lot of them were, were not the worst fouls, but there was just so many of them and, and they were getting away with them. So then when they do done one that was semi-bad, I think I think a yellow probably was the right decision from, from the ref. But... It's just all that frustration comes out and you start screaming at the ref like, what are you going to do about it? You have a go at their players because it kind of looks like oh, they're, they're building up. So they do a, a one out of 10 foul and the ref lets them get away with it. So then they go two out of 10, three out of 10. And and that one was the one that was the worst by quite a long way. And it, you've got to stop them from just going, keep going through you. And, and if the ref's not going to do something about it, you've got to. I don't think he'd done enough to, to put himself in trouble. It wasn't like he went over and swung a punch or anything. Maybe a stupid booking, but I think at some point you've got to make a stand. Uh, I, I don't really see any problem with what you've done, to be honest. Okay. Um, Sandeep, he also says, as, uh, we missed Ozil, but we kept the clean sheet. Yep. Okay. Uh, Cosman Buddha, are you aware of us being less clinical in the front of goal compared to other top, top six teams? We create a lot of chances lately, but we missed a lot. I'd have to agree with this This comment or question uh, we created a lot of chances lately but we missed a lot of them well I mean look again we had the debate about XG on here a couple of weeks ago and I think it's absolute nonsense but you you it was you actually that posted the image that we are the most above our XG in the league so yeah. that that would tell you that we actually score more of our chances than anyone else. And it was quite, as I said, you posted a picture, I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, yeah. we was quite a long way top of that as well. It wasn't like we was just, there was loads of teams all around the same. We was clearing away on top of that. 
Um, I think we discussed there was only the one game against Chelsea. Well, yeah, I was going to say, yesterday was only the second game. Uh, Yesterday, our XG was two, and obviously we only scored one. So I completely disagree with with the question, Um, and and the stats back that up. And again, everyone knows I'm not a stats man, but I I don't feel like we create... Yesterday, we missed missed a couple of good chances and we probably did against United but then when you score goals that where you're not really expected to score from then it you know it swings in roundabouts mm-hmm. I, I just I, I get the question because of I I look at it and go fuck there we go Bellerin's you know he's going up to the right he crosses oh, fuck there goes another chance you know could have been something um, and, and I think it could comes down to we haven't got that that, that winger um, look, not taking nothing away from Bellerin, he's had a he's had a very good season, I think. But um, it just I, I get where he's coming from because I often think to myself, when you've got either a Lacazette or, or an Abema Yang um, playing in, in front of any team, like uh, you know, the, the, the you, you, I think your expectations of an Abema Yang Lacazette is you're going to you're expecting a lot of goals and. Maybe that hasn't happened either. So, but with, with us being so far ahead of our XG, as I said, that would suggest that that is that their finishing has been been brilliant, yeah. and they're, they're scoring when they probably shouldn't. Because as I said, we're, we're so far ahead of of where we we should be according to XG. That, as I said, I, I don't feel like we're missing a chance. I've just I've just dragged them up now. I've just dragged up the website that shows me the XG, and from Open play, we've scored four goals more than what we're expected to, based on the chances created. Uh, one and a half goals more from corners than we're expected to. Uh, one point six from free kicks than what we're expected to, and a quarter zero point two four from a penalty than than we're expected to. Uh, the only the only thing we're down on, uh, we should have scored more from set pieces according to XG. But of the five categories, we're, we're up on four of them and, and handsomely up on, on four of them and then only a slightly bit down on set pieces. Mm, OK, I'm just going through... So, Abemian scored 10 goals. So, how many... If you if I had said... Well, I probably did at the start of the season. How many goals would you like from Abemian? Uh, I think you probably go 30 or comps. If he gets 26 in the league, that's, that's two and three, roughly. Yeah, uh, obviously it's, that's it's just the prem, that's just the Premier League. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, but twenty six is always. I know Salah got whatever last year, but in general, twenty six in the league will put you in the top three in the top scorers. If it, and in and around that argument. Yeah, yeah. So Salah's on ten. Uh, fucking Salah's on ten. Jeez, he can't. Yeah, he got a didn't he? Ah, hat trick. Yeah. Uh, Bemiang ten. Harry Kane nine. And uh, Lacazette, six, he's down in 12. So, you know, the same question, Lacazette. How many do you expect of Lacazette at the start of the season? I don't think anyone expects Lacazette to score as many. Oh, you fucking, you fucking got the hate mail coming now. <laughs> well, well, no, I'm not, because the people are fucking... If they say they expect Lacazette to score as many as Aubameyang, then people are going to have to say, oh, he's not done his job and criticise him, and, and people won't criticise him, so... You can say as much as you want about Lacazette in that sense. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, look, I'd probably say, I'd expect, as you say, 30 from 26, 30, something like that from a Bamiang. Probably, you know, if I get 20 out of Lacazette for the season, I think they've had a good season. So, um, are they on par with that? Probably a Bamiang. Yeah, I suppose they're on par with that, aren't they? I'd like a few more from Lacazette. Those six. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's had that goal United taken off him, which is a oh, joke. Yeah. Well, yeah, that should have been seven, shouldn't it? It's fucking pretty piss poor. Um, Jonas, as good as we seem to play against top class size Liverpool Spurs, as bad is our play against teams of less quality, is this the case of underestimating these kinds of games? I'm not sure. I think if you look at this game, I think he just got this game wrong in isolation. Um, trying to think. I don't know. You could maybe say the, the Wolves game. I think he got it wrong as well. I'm trying to think where we've dropped points to the, the, the lesser team, so to speak. And I think, obviously, I know yesterday we didn't drop points, but I think Henry got it wrong. I think he got it horribly wrong against Wolves, as I said at the time. 
Yep. And then, and then Palace. You know what? It was two penalties. It's that was a hard and, one, really. Like, yeah, two, you're away to Palace. I think the mistake he made at Palace was making most of the players travel for the Europa League game before, um, and he made some bad subs. To be honest, I don't think it's under underestimation. I think, I think the games we've dropped points, bar in City and Chelsea. Even Chelsea, to be fair, I think it's probably when Emery's made the biggest mistakes, and and look, they're not horrendous mistakes. It's not like he's made absolute terrible decisions, mm. but and, and again, we're looking in hindsight because you know what happens. But I think the times he's got it wrong, he's pretty much been punished for it, apart from yesterday. And when he's got it right, he's been rewarded. As I said, look, I was the first to say against Tottenham. I thought what he done was genius. I thought he he managed the game perfectly. You couldn't manage that game any better. Yeah. But then other games he has got wrong, and and he's been caught out, as I said, apart from yesterday, and that was probably down to Huddersfield just being very bad at football. Well, I've just looked back, and so obviously the two, you know, well, fuck, we've gone twenty one un, unbeaten, so it's very hard to try and find something here. Um, the only other one, and I'm trying to... You might remember it better than me, was the 2-3 against Cardiff. We did win it. Um, but to let Cardiff the two goals, I, I don't know if that was a mistake on Emery there. No, I don't really think so. Um, um, but other than that, I'm not really so much Crystal Palace 2-2, but it was the, the couple of penalties, as you say, and Wolves. That's yeah, and I mean, and Cardiff was the first away win we had. Um, it was only the second win in total. We we would obviously lost to Chelsea, City and Chelsea, and we beat West Ham, but we was terrible. And then the next week, we had Cardiff, and we hadn't won an away. Well, we'd only won one away game in the calendar year at that point. Mm. Born, and, born and, me off. They got one early on us, and we were a bit, uh, didn't they? Huh? Born me off. Uh, we two one. Did they yeah, get... we was one. Yeah, but did they get an early goal on us? No, they scored back? last kick before half time. Oh, there you go. Okay. See how fucking good my memory is. That cunt was only a couple of weeks ago. Oh, no, shut up, Tez, and move the fuck on. Um, uh, Cosman Butter, I feel like yesterday's performance was not a bad one despite of only winning 1-0. Okay. I do. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I have to disagree. I... <laughs> um, it was almost a bit... It was almost boring. To watch. I, mean, look, I mean, when you have two shots on target and one of them is from 20, a speculative shot from 25 yards, and look, the keeper's made a great save, but it was a speculative shot from 25 yards from Torreira. When you have two shots on, on target and your holding midfielder has them both, I, I can't see... Against a team that have essentially parked the bus, I don't see how you can label that as a not bad performance. Mm, no, I, I look, we got to win. That, that, that's the you need to win them games. Yeah, that's and and it's always the the argument in football that you have to pick up points in them games, and and that's what will come to be defined at the end of the season. If you pick up points in all them games, obviously you're going to be better off at the end of the season, have more chance of achieving your goal, whether it be winning the league, staying up, getting top four, or what, whatever your target is. So you do need to win them games. And you can't play well every week. So, in that sense, the test has been passed. We've not played well. We've picked up the three points and, and we march on. But that doesn't make it a good performance. Mm -hmm. But performance isn't the be-all and end-all. I mean, I, I would rather... If we had 38 games like that and won, and was that, that shit every week and won them all 1-0, I'd be buzzing. <laughs> you, get, you, you get the same points for that as you do for beating Tottenham it's, and, and playing really well. So, mm. you, you have to mix and match. You can't play well every week. But the, the trick is, when you're not playing well, to still grind out a result somehow, and we've done that. We've managed that, yep. Um, he also says, Cosman Butta, I feel we really lack a good wide player. Yes, we're pretty much, we've been that drum all, all season. Uh, we would be so much potent with a new addition. Mickey Awobi are not consistent at all, and uh, Klozenac as a wide threat brings pace and power but he is so inaccurate. I, I think that's probably a bit fair, unfair on Said. I think his delivery is generally quite good. The, 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 key, the key is Iwobi and Mickey aren't really wide players. And then you look at Kolasinac, who's a fullback or a wingback. He's not a, he's not a winger, and you'd never even dream of playing him on the wing. So 
the the issue is we don't have a winger. I, I think it's probably a bit unfair to look at any of them players because they're they're being played there, but none of them are an out and out winger. They're never going to beat you on the outside. Kolasinac is never going to beat anyone. He's, he, he makes very good runs, and and then it's on someone to find him in behind. And then, as I said, I genuinely think his delivery is quite good, but um, he's not going to beat anyone. And I think that's the issue when you've got a team like team like uh, Huddersfield yesterday who had five six men behind the ball. You need someone that's going to go and beat someone and then pull the, them out of shape because if you beat the first man, then someone else is going to have to cover him, and then every one of their defenders has to move over slightly because you've beaten one man. It sounds so small, beating one player. It sounds so easy. But it dislodges the whole harmony of the defence, because then everyone else has to move over to cover him. And I think our biggest issue is you look at you look at the, the team who finished the game yesterday, or even who started the game yesterday, and you think, who's actually going to go and beat someone? Who's going to go past their man? And we, we don't have anyone. If you could potentially argue that Iwobi might do it, but because he plays on the left and he's right footed, he's only ever going to beat them on the outside, which gives a defender a chance to recover, which means no one needs to track across to cover them and you don't pull them out of position. Mm-hmm. I, I just, when you're talking there, I just remembered about, you know, with players beating that, that run from Bella and I didn't, I forgot about that. Remember that one where all of a sudden he found himself having a crack at goal. You remember that? No. no. Nah, okay. He um, was it Lacazette put the through ball through to him and yeah, fuck it, hard to explain. Now. Um, yeah, Lacazette put the through ball. Bellerin come out, out a bit wider, and he and he he was pretty much on his own. And then I think well, I'm just trying to think where Bemiang was. Anyway, I thought yeah, he, he, he yeah, I'm trying to think. I'll have to have a look back at it now. Fuck yeah. I was hoping you'd remember that. I literally have no idea what you're talking about. No, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, I'm sure I didn't fucking dream it. You wouldn't know, would you? you? <laughs> that RC fella, he has found Schwinn, <laughs> who is missing as he's personally massaging Urzel's back. <laughs> Um, M A M W A Gunner, what was the chant sung about Man United yesterday's game? If there wasn't one, then I must be hearing things. Again, absolutely no idea what he's talking about. Yes, what was the chant yesterday? No, I didn't. No, I don't know. I didn't hear it. Um, yeah, they fucking play good too, them bastards. Everyone's saying, oh, we played them into form. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, I mean, they beat, beat Fulham at home. It's pretty much the most guaranteed three points in the Premier League at the moment. Yeah, they're fucking shocking at defending at the moment. Well, Huddersfield beat them at home. Cardiff beat them at home. All right. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, hack on Larson, big January. He's saying a big January ahead. Maybe some transfer plans after all. What do you guys think? Uh, I, I thought the whole season we need to go into the market in January, whether they will or not. Uh, it's a different story. It's, it's difficult because I don't think we're going to sign any first team players. But just the options, as I said, if you've got a winger that can beat someone, so... In certain games, you have that option if it's needed. Um, I don't think he'll do anything as, with defenders, as I said the other day, unless Koscielny breaks down again before the window. Um, as I said, I, I think we just need options rather than... Well, I mean, no, that's not... I think we need first-team players, but that's not going to happen in January. So I, I would like to see some options come in, people that, that can do something different um, and, and change a game. But may, maybe potentially another, I don't know if another ten will be considered. Well, um, Dembele is getting a big shout out, isn't he? Of course he is. But mm. you going to happen? No. No. Pretty confident. I, I I don't see any reason why it would happen. Mm. Who else we link to? We link with everyone, but it's it's January. People, I mean, well, it's coming up to January, so. Newspapers get bored and recycle old trash. I saw, uh, who was it that DM'd me? Uh, DM'd Clock and Talk, I can't remember. 
saying about uh, and they sent me a link to an article where they said we was going for uh, Undair again and they said well, yeah but that was news in June and they've just had nothing to write so they put it back out there in December like yeah okay I mean, look, I don't know. We could, it was Clay Co Conservative that messaged me that. Oh, Who yeah. knows? We could be after him, but it's just it's just easy. Do you know what I mean? It's an easy story to put in there. If it's wrong, no one's really going to remember. No one's going to come back in February and go, ah, you said we were going to sign under and we haven't. Yeah. It's just like harmless reporting, baseless reporting that, that if you want to get excited about it, people will. And they go, oh, look, we're linked to him. It doesn't mean a fucking It doesn't mean a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'll be honest. I think I think Ven's probably got a couple of targets, and they're going to be a Gwendozi model. I, I I just get that. Which don't get me wrong. I if you can find another couple of them type players, I'm happy. But I just think it's more of it's not going to be the superstar of another team just yet. But it's going to be a superstar of the future, which which I'm very happy with. So. Well, I mean, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's ever gonna be a superstar anyway, just because the budget we're working in, and, and let's face it, at the moment we're not a Champions League team, and it's not a foregone conclusion that that will be a Champions League team next year. But I, the the one, if we're gonna go for someone that goes into the first team now, the, the posi- I I would go for a Danny replacement because they've pretty much said they're not going to offer him a new contract. We're we're lacking massively in that. We don't have the change of option up front. We don't have anyone that can go onto the wings. Um, again, saying someone that can beat people, I was just talking about that a minute ago. I'm not saying Danny's the most skillful and he's going to do five step overs and, and drop the shoulder and beat someone, but at least he can fucking kick it and run. Like, And you look at, say, Mikatarin on, on the right, and, and that's not an option there. And, and even to an extent, it won't be on the left. So I wouldn't be surprised if they go for a, a winger that can potentially play up front. Um, that that's probably the only person I could see that that may come in and bother the first team in in, in terms of on that right wing spot. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think who's that bloke in Leicester, but he got sold, I think. Come from Sporting, who was that bloke? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Anyway, I can't think of his fucking name now. Yeah. Went from Sporting to Leicester. From sporting to Leicester, yeah. Are you dreaming again? No, 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 no. He was a second, like a second striker. Um, oh, fuck me, no. What's his name? Anyway, I'll think of it. Um, I just, You're not thinking of Slimani, are you? Yeah, 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 that's it, yeah. How have you got him from what I've just said? I don't know, but he's completely the different type of player. To yeah, no, I, I was just thinking, I, I was wondering where he, he was and... You know, I thought maybe because he's cheap and he might be type of like a, a Welbeck, you know, it's not a Welbeck model player, but it, it might be a, something that Arsenal <laughs> I don't fucking know, to be honest. How did I get that name? <laughs> um, anyway, don't worry about it. He's, he's, not, he's not coming to Arsenal. Um, he's also shit. Yeah, he is fucking very shit. But no, I was just thinking that... that I don't. You were talking about it might be somebody who might battle for the first team, and I was just trying to think of strikers who they're not going to battle. You know, we're not going to go out and pay for a first team striker. It'd be somebody like like him. You know, like a fucking five million dollar striker or something. Because you know, Leicester paid thirty million for him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They paid heaps, and they let him go for like fifteen, didn't they? Oh, he's out on loan. They haven't sold him. Oh, he's out on loan. Okay. But I mean, no, it'll be a winger. It won't be. It won't be someone that can bother them on the, in the first team. But it'll be someone. When I say in the Danny mould, I mean like quick and strong. Uh, again, just to give you that change of option. I, I don't mean that they're going to come in and bother the strikers because no one's going to come in and dislodge Bamiang and Lacazette. Um, but it'll be someone if we get someone that's going to bother the first team and actually have a chance of starting. It'll be someone in the Danny mould, bit of pace, bit of power. Um, but I would imagine that person would start from the right wing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye, isn't it? Zvan? What a golden eye. Diamond, like diamond eye. Yeah. I, think, I think you'll see, see one or two of somebody who, he, who he's had an eye on because that's just the type of bloke he is. So he bought Dembele to Dortmund and I, I reckon he'll try and do a similar thing that he's done with Guendouzi. 
Um, you know, he, he bought Tuera here, didn't he? So he, you can already make a case that he's he's not bad at his job. So oh, no, just... <laughs> well, he's signed Socrates twice. There's no criticism of him at all. Um, but they're they're completely different. You can't compare Guendouzi to them. Guendouzi was an unknown kid in the in the second division. Well, so was uh, Dembello, wasn't he? Where did no. he come from? No, he came from the, the, the top league in France. Everyone was after him. He just oh, convinced yeah. them with the Dortmund project. Um, I think they paid like 15 million for him, 20 million for him. Um, mm-hmm. And he gave him a chance to shine. It's, they're, they're not comparable. The same with Torreira. He was he was a 28 million pound signing that had played in the World Cup for Uruguay and had a, a big season in Italy the season before. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, look, he may sign, sign a player from the foreign leagues that maybe isn't hailed as a star. I mean, I know we've been uh, linked with Saar and Pepe from the French League, who are both going to be £30 million plus signings, but they're not the, the Dembele's and the household names that people are expecting, and they could go on to be worth a hell of a lot more. Um, but they're the only, them type of people may come in and bother the first team. He's not going to go and spend £3 million on someone who's going to come and start on the right wing for us. Where's that little Chinese cunt playing over there in the Bundesliga? Are you talking about Kegawa? I don't know what his fucking name is. Do you? Yeah, that bloke. That we signed uh, and sent out online. Oh, Asana. Uh, yeah, yeah, Asana. yeah. What yeah. about him? Well, you know, is he potential? You know, I don't know where he's going. Is he a, is he a thought uh, that he might come back? I reckon he's fucking quick. Is he a world no. replacement? No. I think we might have even got rid of him now. Oh, have we sold him, have we? Nah, surely not. No, no, he is still on loan. He couldn't get a work permit for ages. Um, but, no, I mean, look, he's only played five games in the Bundesliga this year. Oh, is he? So he's not doing that well. Mm. It's always an odd sign in that. That was really, really an odd sign in that. No yeah. signing from Asia is ever odd. <laughs> Just, I couldn't work it out. <laughs> no signing from Asia is ever odd. Okay, um... South, uh, what do you think? Midweek, obviously. Week. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mustafi is injured anyway. Socrates could potentially play, but I don't. I wouldn't risk it. The it's a difficult. I, I want to see a team very, very similar to to what we saw at um, away to Vorskla. Um Maybe even a touch weaker because I don't want to see Lichtsteiner playing. Um, but I, I said your El Nenny's will get a run out. Uh, Smith Rowe, Eddie, Willock will all start. Maitland Niles will start. As I said, Kashoni would have, if you'd have asked me this at 2.59 yesterday, I'd have said 100% Kashoni starts. And, and maybe even Monreal. Now I'm not so sure about that. I think Nacho probably still does because he's not been out for too long. Mm. Uh, but Kashoni is a very, it's a tough one. It's a very, very tough one. Because you've got to get him up to full speed, but then you don't want him having two. You don't want him having two games in four days, having not played for eight months yeah, and Ram- not really training. Yeah, that's right. Ramsey's Ramsey. a, a weird one because he wasn't on the bench yesterday, but they said he was. After Old Trafford, they said, "Oh, yeah, he's fine. It's not as bad as it looked, and he and he should be okay for the weekend." But then he he wasn't even on the bench. Obviously, he wasn't okay. Mm. So, what's happening with his fitness? Obviously, is another one that remains to be seen. Again, he played at Borussia. Uh, it, we're, we're not short on players in midfield and whatnot. Again, Ozil might be coming back in, and if I was, and if he's again, it's another chance to give him minutes. Um, so you, you never know; you could see Ozil and Ramsey. Mm-hmm. I just um, typed in, I'll Google Arsenal transfer news. Have you guess what the first fucking thing that comes up? Dembele. No. Two hours ago from Talk Sport, Arsenal are mulling over selling Ozil for twenty five oh, million dollars in January. In the mm. yeah. There you fucking Winner. go. So what a load of shit, eh? Mm-hmm. I think that was started by the Sun or the Mirror. Yeah, okay, the good old Sun couldn't get much fucking traction out of their fucking balloon story. Uh-huh. Well, they probably did, I suppose. <laughs> There was a lot of balloons being thrown around the pitch yesterday. It was quite fun. <laughs> was it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then Southampton. Very hard to make a prediction. There. 
Southampton yeah. on the weekend. Yeah, so obviously it'll be Hussein Hartl's first home game. I, I would probably argue it's his first proper game. He only had two tra- I mean, they lost to Cardiff away yesterday, but they only had two training sessions. Mm. Um, Who'd they replace uh, him with? Who was it? Hussein Hartl. Okay. You ain't got a clue. I've got no idea who he is. <laughs> his name, so they call him the Alpine Klopp. I think mm. he's from Austria. Uh, interesting or kind of ridiculous fact. His surname, Hussein Hartl, translates as Rabbit Hutch. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Rabbit Hutch. Are you just, are you just taking a piss now or what? Huh? <laughs> you ain't fucking on the Google too much, have you? <laughs> no, it was on the radio as I was driving, driving back from the game yesterday. <laughs> they were talking about the, the Southampton game. And, uh, yeah, Ralph yeah. Hussein Hartl. Apparently Hussein Hartl. And I'm not even sure what language. Mm. I'm assuming Austrian. I don't even know if Austrian is a language or they use another language. But, um, yes, yeah, Hussein Hartl is... And this, is where we need, this is where we need fucking Schwinn on the podcast. He's good at this shit. I mean, I'd be amazed if he knows that Hussein Hartl, if Hussein Hartl does actually translate to, so to what, Rabbit Hartl. I mean, he's had, he was a Leipzig manager. Oh, okay. when they, but yeah, he's known. He's not like a, they've just got some geezer off the ski slopes. He, uh, <laughs> I think, he, I, think I, I might be wrong here. Yeah. I think he took, he took, I think it was Ingolstadt. He got when they were in the German second or like the, the, their version of the championship, their second division, and got them promoted and then made them a stable, like steady Bundesliga club. Uh, and then he left for Leipzig and he obviously got them into the Champions League. Yeah, um, okay. So I mean, he comes with with somewhat of a reputation. It's weird, eh? Like I thought they would have gone you know, Moyes or. I mean, Allardyce is the one that probably most people expected. Yeah, Allardyce or yeah, bloody yeah. It's a bit weird. But anyway, Southampton straight down to relegation. See you later, lads. Um, that's about it, mate. We're just dribbling on now. Yeah. Got any girls? Yeah, I'm just dribbling on. <laughs> uh, no. no. That's all she wrote. All she wrote. Thank you, everybody. And hopefully your big fucking Schwinny be back next week after the Southampton game. Um, if not, I'm going to start looking for some replacements. So. <laughs> um, thank send you. Send in your CVs. <laughs> yeah, send in your CVs. That's it. Uh, Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And um, bye. Adios.